first day here at Wembley. And the Rangers supporters in this driving rain, when they thought the day had ended in disappointment, salute Peter Hucker. Because although I'm sure the man of the match will be decided over the two games as it was last year, when Joe Corrigan won it, for my money today, he would take some beating on this performance. He started off in the right frame of mind, Peter Hucker, and he carried it through all the way. Don't forget there's one important point about the replay, which Terry Venables is totally aware of. Glenn Roder cannot play. The Rangers captain will be suspended from the replay because he was sent off at Luton in a league match. And the suspension starts 14 days from the sending off, which will be on Tuesday. So I would imagine that John Gregory will captain the team and Roder, applauding the fans, will be disappointed to know that he can't play in the second match. So no presentations, just a joint lap of honour. And one reflects with Steve Perryman and Tony Curry, two of the experienced professionals, on the only two occasions when this has happened in Wembley history. Last year, Spurs Manchester City and 1970 Chelsea Leeds. Now a replay again. With both the goals coming late in the afternoon. And Spurs, who had only about six minutes to hang on, couldn't do so. So, at the end of extra time, the 101st FA Cup final ends between these two London clubs. Queen's Park Rangers won, Tottenham Hotspur won. Well, a game that Spurs should have won, nearly did, but Rangers' unquenchable spirit enabled them to fight another day. But just how did those involved reflect on it all on the way back home? First, we join Alan Parry talking to the Tottenham players on their coach. Ray, I suppose the feeling now is one of absolute frustration, having been so close to a win. <coughs> yes, obviously, um, having gone through the 90 minutes of normal time and then half an hour of, of extra time and, and scoring what looked like the winning goal with probably, I don't know, seven or eight minutes to go, something like that. And then through a little lack of concentration at the back, we've conceded one with three minutes to go, which seems a bad time for us because the League Cup final, Liverpool scored an equaliser three minutes from time. But, uh, you know, obviously we've got to get back to uh, to work on Monday and get ourselves stewed up for Thursday now. Is the danger, though, that you will be a bit deflated, having been so close to a win, and they will now be elated? I'm sure probably on today's performance they'll feel that they had a bit of a let-off. But having said that, I think uh, sitting in the bath there after the game, I think all the lads knew what they had to offer now having played against them and know what we had to offer and uh, let's be honest that Peter Hooker had a superb game in golf them today. What about yourself and the injury? You looked a bit stiff getting on the coat. Well I think that's old age to be honest but uh, yes I have to admit that the calf injury that I've had all week um, is a lot sore after the game today and we'll just have to see what happens in the week next week. What do you think are the important things now uh, from the experience you gained a year ago between now and Thursday? What are the right things to do? I think basically you can't overtrain. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, little niggly knocks here and there, so um, you know we're going to take it easy for the week and uh, reassess things. And I think we've um, we've learnt a lot off them playing them, and I, I feel uh, I feel we've still got a lot left up our sleeve. Uh, and I think they, they they play to their best of their ability today. Do you think though psychologically they may have the upper hand in a sense that you know you were so close to victory? I don't think so. I think if they sat down and really thought about the game and how much we uh, dictated the game, um, I think they would be a little bit wary of us uh, on Thursday. So um, obviously the goalkeeper had a, a, had a blinder and uh, it was lucky for them that he did because it could have been four or five, we feel. And it means problems for you and the other international lads, of course, now looking ahead to the weekend. Yes, obviously uh, Mr Greenwood's got a few more problems uh, which he could do without really but um, obviously I feel we've got to stick together we've been together all season and uh, it's such a vital game for us with you know me and Ray have, um, and Steve Archibald Paul Price we've got to stick together and, and get the right result I can't see them beating us on Thursday I feel a lot happier about the situation that, that, than I did when I went to Wembley this morning believe it or not Do you think Queen's Park Rangers will be thinking now we've had one let off let's make sure that we uh, take the most of our second opportunity Maybe so, but I think any neutral observer who watched the game today um, must see the... Uh, when we, I thought we were better in every department. Obviously, they had a stage in the game where they dominated, but generally speaking, we, uh, we must have dominated 80% of 
percent of the game. Uh, I think when you look what Ray did today, which wasn't an awful lot from 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 their team, from their forwards in terms of saving shots, um, uh, says an awful lot for the way we played. Spurs players all paying a tribute to Peter Hacker, but it was a game where injuries played a major part. And if the fates had really turned against Queens Park Rangers, an ambulance would have been a more suitable vehicle for them to travel by and recollect with Barry Davis. Clive, what exactly is the position with your ankle? Well, at the moment it's very sore. I've had it heavily strapped and um, I'll be taking some pills to reduce the inflammation. But um, all I can say is I'm hopeful. Hopeful of making the replay? Yeah, yes, that's right. When actually did it happen? It happened in the first minute. Um, first real run I made back. Um, I twisted and turned, turned over on my ankle. And um, I could feel it then that it, was, uh, it, it wasn't just an ordinary sprain. Freddie, you've had time to think a little bit about it. What's it like to be the hero of the hour? Uh, I think we've got heroes all over the bus, it's not, uh, not just me. There's one sitting over there, Terry Fennick. Uh, he, had, he was brave enough to go forward at that stage of the game. A lot of people could have dropped their heads and uh, said, well, we've given them a good run for their money. But he went up there and uh, knocked it in. Well, certainly a lot of our viewers have you some distance ahead in this competition to be the uh, man of the cup final. <coughs> uh, well, I just hope it keeps them entertained. Um, I'm just glad that we're still in it. Terry, it seems a bit ironic that a man with your sort of accent should be uh, taking the London final into a replay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fabulous. You know, I think the boys, as you can hear, we're all over the moon with the result of the year. Uh, I'm sure Tottenham are not, they will not be going into the replay in the same frame of mind as we, we will be. You know, we're cut out now, getting a good result after you know, losing the late goal like we did. But um, we fancy our chances strongly now for the replay. Do you think the balance has turned Rangers Yeah, around? I think, I mean, that was our, if we were going to have any nerves, it was today. And um, Thursday, I think we'll be out there to pip them, you know. Terry, what's the position first with injuries? Well, Clive is obviously very, very <laughs> doubtful. Um, and of course, Glenn is suspended, which is a blow. I find it, you know, it's a bit, um, uh, a bit annoying as much as other teams are actually finished the season and if you if they got sent off at the same time as Glenn they'd go into next year I would have thought that um, if you're playing the first leg you should be able to play in the second are you going to make any any moves to try and do well, anything you about it can you? I mean that's the rules and we've got to, we've got to abide by them um, but uh, it's just disappointing because the boys had an excellent game today and to miss a cup final I think is a bit severe I'm not depressed at all. The lads have got a, a chance of winning the cup. Now, I mean, although I can't play, I'm included in the whole squad. They're all my mates. I'm elated, rather, because we've come from a goal behind. I would have been disappointed had we lost the lead, you know, but we were losing and Terry Fenix got the goal five minutes from the end. And I'm, more, I'm elated, not disappointed, because uh, we're banging there on Thursday with a great chance of winning and I'll be the first out to congratulate them when, they, when Tony picks the cup up. Well, Laurie, is that uh, over-optimistic from Queen's Park Rangers? Are they in after-match hysteria or what? Can no, they I it? think they've got to think that way, Jim, because they did rescue it and a lot of teams wouldn't have kept coming at uh, Tottenham in that situation. Uh, I'd just like to mention that to Barry Davis, that Terry Fennick hasn't really got an accent. That's the right way to talk. <laughs> when you say Thursday and today, today. Well, yeah, and if he's there long enough, Terry Venables will be talking like that. <laughs> but uh, he wouldn't mind talking like that tonight, really, because I honestly think if you're a manager and you're a goal down with nine minutes to go at Wembley, you're a bit, you don't think you're going to get back. And it was credit to them that they came forward. But I wonder if Ray Clements, when he has a look at it tomorrow, with all his experience, and he's a sensible fella, wishes he hadn't kept possession by giving the ball to his defenders at that time. Mm. because uh, uh, eventually it was lost by the young substitute. But uh, Queen's Park Rangers were looking for it. They were right up there. And I wonder if the old adage, you know, hit the corner flag would have been better at that stage. Because Ray didn't have a lot to do during the game. That was a fact. He made one vital save right on the 90th minute from Stainrod. Mm. But uh, overall, I mean, the game was about the incredible hooker. And I think that's what his name should be because he's six foot four. He had no nerves. He's played half a season in the Football League and his first save was vital, and he carried on to dominate the game, really. Mm -hmm. When you talk about them freezing the ball, holding on to it at the end, it, it's all very well sort of to sit there and say, float the corner flag, but as a player, 
when you're tired, do you feel that you're saving your own energy by keeping possession, aren't you? Yeah, but I mean, Ray Cummins could kick the length of the field and his, his front men were tired, but I don't think he would have minded running to win another cup medal. Um, I think you've got to pay credit to the players in extra time because the game had died more or less in the second half was a spectacle. And I've never really um, agreed that players get tired after a long season. I think they lift themselves for a cup final anyway. And Tottenham players are used to playing 60 and 70 games because of their success. Um, I think that a lot of people froze in the second half. It suddenly dawned on them the seriousness of the situation, you know. Um, the first half I thought was enjoyable because uh, Queen's Park Rangers' attitude was good, it was carefree, and uh, that was a credit to Terry Venables. And then Tottenham got on top and were shooting from distances, which is a good thing. I think people like to see shots on goal, and they don't mind if the keeper saves them, but they do like to see shots. In the second half, they didn't see a lot. And in extra time, then there was the tension came in, and the excitement at both ends. Chances were missed, and I thought the one goal would have won it, but uh, credit to them, they came back. I think Thursday, you'll get down to the nitty-gritty of an ordinary game without all the trimmings which have been attached to this week. And uh, Keith Birkenshaw had a lot of problems right at the last minute with Ricardo Villa. And it was a great pity that he didn't play. If you take the politics away from football, um, they really missed him and Ardiles from last year's team. And of team. course he won't play on Thursday again. No, uh, no. Be and uh, Keith's made that decision. And uh, I think it's a credit to him that he's got a team that can still perform at this level. And with all the trimmings away from it for Thursday night, with Alan very doubtful, and with Glenn Rhoda out, which I think is a pity. I think that it's wrong that a man should lose a cup medal, as Terry Van was hinted at there, because he's probably made those mistakes in league games. And I think that all managers will agree that he should suffer in league games, not cup ties, and especially a cup final. But to miss those two players on Thursday, and I think Galvin and Clements and Perryman played with little injuries today, and the extra few days will make them better for Thursday night. I think the balance will be tipped in their favour. And uh, Tony Curry, I don't think he'll be doing much circuit training between now and then. <laughs> he covered all Still the ground line. and he did tremendously well. And uh, looking at the highlights here today, he didn't have to do a lot of work at the back, yeah. but he loved it, didn't he? It was his stage today. Yeah. Uh, when they didn't applaud him, he told them to applaud him. He lifted his hands and he milked the door. And he was an artist. And uh, he proved to me that he can still play top level. But there's a lot of the other Queen's Park Rangers players who have still got to prove it yet, and especially the front runners, yeah. because they couldn't score today and uh, needed the full-back to get them a replay. Yeah. And I think it'll be an interesting game on Thursday. I'm sure it will. I liked uh, Gary Waddock and uh, Glenn Roder. I thought they did spectacular work well, Waddock's for them. a ginger nut, and you, and you should always nut. have one of them around. <laughs> <laughs> a Geordie-speaking ginger nut would be oh, ideal well, in your I mean, mind, of course. Perfect. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. It'll all happen on Thursday evening, same place, 7.30 kick-off. But in the Scottish Cup final between Aberdeen and Glasgow Rangers, the result was conclusive, although it took them some time to sort it all out. Your commentator, Archie Mc. He has a free kick to Aberdeen in a very good situation. Well, that's a good curling ball there, McLeish. The first real effort we've had in the game. Exactly four minutes gone in the big red-haired internationalist coming up to try his luck at that. Bent, who really hasn't got going in the match so far. Cooper, way goes. Brilliant ball by Cooper. Diao. And it goes into John McDonald. He scores. A quite superb goal by John McDonald. With 15 minutes gone, the Rangers supporters in ecstasy. There's the score. Now, McDonald is renowned for his finishing. And that beautiful ball by Cooper in midfield set it up. Push forward there and watch the running of DL. DL did a lot of good work for Rangers. And this is where it was valuable, turning quickly. And look at this deft little header. And look at that lovely walk by Strachan. There's a second tackle. McMaster and away by Jackson at the stretch. There's Rugby. Aberdeen exerting more pressure. Coming back into the game again. And Alec Bullock goes right across. Even Kennedy's pace couldn't get round the edge of the Rangers defence. And about uh, 12 minutes of the 
across that one. That's a good looking ball again to Jackson. Hard hit there by Simpson. And there's a blocking equalizer by Alec McLeish. What a superb goal. As the ball breaks down here. A beautiful piece of skill. McLeish wondering what to do with it. He decided let's go for the top corner. And he made it. Brilliant equalizer. Strachan. Well, that's a brilliant ball, McGee. He's caught. Mark McGee has put Aberdeen into the lead. 2-1. The very break that Aberdeen have been fighting so hard for. Away went Strachan and watch this. White superb pass. Floats it right beyond the defense. And Rangers are up against it. Loaded in well. There's Jackson trying to go up. Russell. Well knocked away by Willie Miller. Here's McGee. This is a good looking attack. He's got to part with it now. Black. Surely he must put it away. Oh, brilliant save. Stuart again, saving Rangers. The danger is still on, but that relieves it. Now watch this. One against one. The narrowing of the angle, perfect, and then getting down and trying to use his body, realizing the ball was going higher than that and getting the hand up. play Bell forcing the two Rangers players to converge on him McKee running very well and it, it's still there what's McKee going to do? It must be yes Strachan has made it 3-1, and that is it, I would imagine. The little man, tumbling over with joy. Gruber, here's Kennedy. Strachan. goes Cooper. Cooper with a great chance. Cooper must make it four. He does. Oh. He can hardly believe he got through eventually. There is Willie Here is the jubilation. There's a kiss and there's a cup. Some first-class action there from the Scottish Cup final. Well, I know that Laurie was suffering more than usual this afternoon, wanting Spurs to win and confirm Southampton's European involvement. But another suffering spectator must have been Ron Greenwood, trying to collect together the battered elements of the World Cup squad with Clements, Perryman, Hoddle and Crooks, all involved next Thursday. On the cards at the moment, too, is the England v Holland International to be played at Wembley on Tuesday evening next. So we all have our problems. The replay of the cup final is on Thursday, the kick-off at 7.30pm, and you'll be able to see the whole match live on BBC One. No problems for us, let's hope it's a really good match. But tonight, none of this will worry young Peter Hucker. Who's he, you might say? Well, from obscurity at the start of the season, he's 1982 cup finals, man of the match. First instalment, the next to come. Good night. Outside him is Tony Galvin, two the other way. That's Brooks shot. Oh, what a fine save by Peter Hucker. Brilliantly tipped over. Galvin short to Hazard. That's his shot. And Hucker turned it away. Archibald's gone through the centre. And this could be it. Archibald is still on the goalkeeper for Spurs. And Hucker has saved. Little Gary Brook, he'll try a shot from here. Oh, that's the sort of spectacular stuff the fans want to see. <laughs> Thank you.